Hey guys, in this video series, I aim to provide you all with a brief but practical tutorial on how to apply the C programming language within the context of our course. Now out there, there already exist many different resources for learning how to apply C, but within this particular video series, my goal is to provide us with some instruction for how to apply C to our particular computing system, the MicroPad, as well as our particular microcontroller, the Atmel ATX Mega 128A1U. Now this video series is not going to provide a complete overview of the C programming language. So there's gonna be some details that we do not discuss within this video series regarding C, but hopefully this video series will cover all of the basic concepts necessary to get started with C within the context of our course. Now, whenever there's some um, content that's not covered or whenever there is uh, something else that you want to um, look up or you wanna have some other resource or two, I have two primary resources for you all to first probably look at. And the first of which I'll show is the C programming language book, and particularly the second edition of this book. Now this book, the first interesting thing to note is that one of the authors is the creator of the C programming language, Dennis Ritchie. Now, second thing to note is that this book, even though written, um, the second edition published in 1988, a lot of content regarding C has not changed much since this book was first published. Now this book is meant to be a nice introductory guide for how to learn to apply C. And as such, there's gonna be a lot of content that we, we're gonna cover in this video series, but some in which probably won't make sense too much for the purposes of this course. And some of which that we're just not gonna have time, at least in this basic um, video series. Now, whenever there's something again that you don't feel like we cover enough within this video series or you want an additional um, reference source for information, you should probably go to this this book first. Um, and I don't expect that you all actually read through this entire book within the context of this course, but there is at the end of this book an appendix, Appendix A, which I believe was originally a reference manual for those that were to write compilers for C, or it is, um, which we, if that's, we're definitely not in that position in the context of this course. But nonetheless, for those people um, in regard to have a reference manual, those people need to, that are going to write a compiler, need to know all the ins and outs of C or a concise, um, have a concise uh, information bank for all of the um, main aspects of C. And this reference manual, this Appendix A, is going to provide that. So in usual, I'll, I'll, when I reference or I tell you all to um, refer to uh, certain aspects of C. This might be one of the first places you want to go to because it's try it's attempted to be written in a readable but still com more or less complete manner for those that need a reference. Now, when this book or this appendix is not good enough, my next go-to reference would be the International Standard for C, which is really like the all-encompassing uh, resource for learning how to apply C or knowing any specifics regarding C. And this um, document officially is known as the ISO slash IEC 9899 document. And this defines and establishes how C is basically meant to be implemented and applied. Now there are different versions of this standard. This version that we're looking at right here is actually the 1999 version of the standard. And I'm doing that because um, I'm, I'm referring to this here and I'm probably going to uh, ask that you all or suggest that you all refer to this version as well because most tools out there such as the one that we're utilizing for this course thus far, Atmel Studio um, and other IDEs related, most tools such as those generally don't readily support newer and newer versions of a programming language such as C. And normally it takes some time if a long time even sometimes for a newer version of a program language to get supported and the c99 or the 1999 version of c is actually the default um, i believe that is supported by um, atmel studio the ide that we will utilize so for for that purpose and for in general with this standard being a common if not the most common supported standard by tools out there i'll generally refer you all to this version and the second reason is that this standard as well, probably because of that reason, the first reason I just gave is one of the easiest to find, find online. Um, 
I, I think I might have found the 2011 version online as well. But if you look up the standard for C, this is probably the first one that you'll find. So that's another good reason for um, referring to this one as well. Now, this other, the C programming language book that I just mentioned as well, there exists a free copy, um, I believe that is legal, not illegal, but legal online. And in this YouTube video, um, in the description for this video, I'll actually post a link to both uh, this version of the document I'm looking at as well as the standard. Hopefully this is indeed a le legal version and hopefully FBI is not going to um, bust down my door and take me away before I can finish the rest of these videos. But if that's not the case, um, hopefully you can refer to this version as well. But overall, again, please refer to these two documents whenever you need uh, an additional resource. And these are probably, again, the go-to resources that I would recommend. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap up here for this introduction, and let's go ahead and get started with some topic related to C in the next video.